Okay. I'm going to be here in this little corner and the presentation is on the right side. So this webinar is perfect for nail enthusiasts and uh, let me know who are you by using this uh, little codes that I have for you. So if you're a nail enthusiast, please send one. Uh, for beginners and beauty school students, maybe you're a licensed nail technician or experienced nail technician, like you have plenty of experience, you're working with the clients for quite a while now, but for some reason you're feeling burnt out. I felt that a few times throughout my career and it's totally fine. And if you're at this stage, we also um, have something for you. And maybe you're a nail educator and you're still looking for ways to learn something. Um, all right. So we have one, three, one, two. Okay, so we have so many beginners here as well as nail enthusiasts. Awesome. We also have some people burnt out uh, and, okay, and licensed nail technician. Awesome. So I know that some of you are here for the first time. And um, if you are here for the first time, let me know. But if you know me for a long time, please send hearts or any other emoji, because I definitely know that some of you are my regular students of my webinars, uh, because I see some familiar names. Uh, but I think that some of you are definitely new. I'm a beginner. I only do DIY. Hello. Okay. Um, so for those who are here for the first time and you don't know me yet, let me quickly introduce myself so we get to know each other. I'm Anastasia Milton. I'm 19 years in the industry and 16 years as educator. So it's quite a while, right? Actually, the, no, this year I'm going to celebrate my 20 years anniversary. Can you imagine that? That's like a really long time. So I'm award-winning nail artist, but my favorite part was not just competing and winning in nail competitions. I realized that I like to motivate people and to help them win the competitions. So that's what I did for a very long time. And I have, we have over 100 trophies that are won by my students. And that's what I'm doing until this day, sharing my knowledge, my expertise, uh, doing it through social media, through my classes and through these webinars as well. Oh, and I have, I see so many hearts. Oh my God, you guys know me, that's so awesome. Okay, so I see that there is a little uh, problem, a little delay through streaming on, uh, through the nailsproacademy.com. We're working on fixing this issue, do not worry. Uh, okay, let's continue. So now let me know how many years are you in the nail industry or maybe not years yet, maybe a few months or weeks or even days. Um, the life is not working on your website. Yes, thank you for letting me know we're working on this issue right now and I hope it's going to be fixed within a few minutes. For now, let's communicate right here. Hello from Wisconsin. Not long on the channel, but have been watching for a few months. Awesome, Patricia. Oh, we have someone with experience of 20 years, just like me. That's awesome. 15 years. Wow. Three years, zero, just starting. Seven years, eight years. We love Anna's journey. Thank you guys so much. Uh, one year, six years, 18 years. Wow. So we have many beginners here and also many nail technicians who have quite an experience. And I just want to tell you guys, you are awesome. Thank you so much for joining because if you're getting started, obviously you want to learn new technique, you want to get inspired and constantly learn. And that's amazing because the more you learn, the faster you will get to another level of mastery. Uh, but if you're already experienced like 10 years and more, and you are still learning, that also means that you are growing as a professional nonstop. So I just want to say that I'm proud of you guys and you're doing like a really great job. 
Okay, I know that some of you are interested in enrolling in my course because I received some messages about it and I'm going to present it later uh, during this webinar, okay, uh, like um, almost at the end. It's going to be a new full certification nail technician program because until this day, we had at Nails Pro Academy, which is my online school, we had classes covering almost every topic, like nail art, pedicure, nail extensions, dual forms, but they were all separate topics, like one topic, one course. And sometimes we got questions like, what if I don't want to like, choose or learn just one? What if I want to learn everything? I want to like become like from beginner to top rated nail technician. Like I want to learn basics. I want to learn extreme shapes. I want to learn Russian manicure, which we're going to talk about today. Pedicure, like everything. So this certification program will be about that, like everything. Okay, a little bit more technical information. So approximate time of the webinar is one and a half to two hours. But it really depends on your um, questions and according to what I see now, like I have so many comments from you, I think it's going maybe to take a little longer, but I always try, you know, to keep all the important information short. And also I will do my best to respond to all your questions. Uh, so please help me to reply on some questions if you see that uh, I already gave an answer and some person maybe missed it. It will be super helpful. I recommend you to turn off distractions and that's exactly what I just did. Um, so I will not be distracted. Um, we're going to do, you know, like a deep uh, focused work within these two hours. And this is how you will get the most from this webinar. And replay will be available for a limited time. This is probably one of the most frequent questions uh, that we get. Uh, I encourage you to watch until the end because another thing that is going to happen at the very end of the webinar is giveaway for participants. I will uh, give away one online class to one of you and this is, well, this is going to be like a random but not 100%. I will ask you a question and the answer uh, is inside of this webinar. So I'm going to share this information and if you were listening closely or maybe you already know the answer, you will, you will know. And then I will choose among people who gave me the right answer, who's the winner. All right, so this is the program for today. Um, Clarine is asking, is it live or pre-recorded? This is live, like Clarine, absolutely live. That's the point of the webinar. So we can communicate in a real life time. Well, maybe there's a little delay, like about 30 to 40 seconds. That's why when you send me a message, I will see it in a little while. And when I respond, you will also um, like need to wait a little, but no, it's like 100% live. So program for today, basics of the most demanded nail service, which is Russian manicure or dry manicure, which is the same thing. We're going to bust the myths about dangers of Russian manicure talk about is Russian manicure dangerous and also talk about most common problems with Russian manicure. Okay, so I'm seeing that uh, there was a little problem through um, with uh, streaming through the website and looks like it's been fixed now. So uh, if you guys are watching from YouTube, uh, that's totally fine. It's exactly the same webinar. Uh, the only reason uh, for, uh, from YouTube to um, watching through nailsproacademy.com is that um, when we're going to do a giveaway at the end, we will be counting only comments from Nails Pro Academy. Okay, so you can find the link under my video. I hope, by the way, I hope this link link is going to work, um, but. You can watch from anywhere. Just um, wanted to let you know that giveaway will be at nailsproacademy.com as well as uh, the special offers will be available there. Okay, so what else are we going uh, to uh, talk about today? Should we trim the cuticles or is there a way to avoid it? That's also another common question that I get a lot. 
we will talk about nail drill bits that are suitable for Russian manicure and how Russian manicure can increase durability of nail extensions and overlays. Oh, wow, we have uh, Angela, 41 years as a nail technician. Wow, uh, we have Trap, hi, I'm from Dublin. Oh, hi, yeah, I, I remember you. I uh, have Jane, Deborah, Clarine, life with Raisha. Thank you guys for joining. And that's not everything. We're not just going to talk about Russian manicure and about tools and myths and all that. I'm also going to show you a hands-on demo, which I pre-recorded because my previous experience with live streams showed that uh, it's going to be much better quality this way and you will be able to see all the details because I recorded something in Mac with micro lenses too. And also you will get a special offer for a full certification class. Okay, so who's ready? Let's start. Send plus or fire emojis so I will know that you are ready and we're going to start with our main program. That's okay. I see uh, Danielle saying that I'm a little late. That's fine because we are just getting started. Okay, I am excited as you can tell. So I get this a lot now. Anastasia, I can't believe you started from zero. But the point is every single nail technician, every single, um, I don't know, blog that you can see on Instagram, YouTube, every single person started from zero with zero subscribers. And that's just how it works. Um, and I know that um, I'm doing it for 20 years. So if you're just getting started, if you're doing this for a couple months, it seems like, oh, that's, no, that's impossible. Like, how can you do that? Because uh, I get uh, many comments on my channel that I make it look so easy. Uh, but the truth is, it is easy for me because I've been doing it for so long. Uh, but if you're doing it for the first time, let's say nail extensions or Russian manicure or anything, it might seem more complicated, but it's fine because as you practice more and learn, it will be easy for you too. So my first works looks looked like this. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the pictures of my very first works, but trust me, they were terrible. Maybe it's actually for good that I don't have this uh, pictured memories because back then I don't think I had a smartphone. So we used, you know, like regular cameras and I, I probably just didn't picture it. Um, I did many mistakes too. So I had clients who never returned, who had product lifting, broken nails, and that's okay. That's just part of the process. And most of my clients, they never returned. And the problem was I didn't understand why. Right now I know because uh, they had product lifting, they were simply not satisfied with the service that I gave them. But back then I didn't know. So I was like, maybe, I don't know, they didn't like location or the music that I was playing. Uh, and since I didn't have many returning customers, um, I couldn't afford to buy a lot of new products, like new colors, uh, new e-file, but I, you know, I wanted to buy something new so I can um, offer more services. So I just kept practicing and using any opportunity to learn. And it took me almost three years of constant mistakes and problems to figure it out how to do nails that will look pretty and last. And last. Uh, but the good news is that you don't need to wait three years. It took me three years because back then uh, I couldn't find classes on a certain topics. So I had to learn through trial and error, trial and error on my clients, which so I had to learn it the hard way. Uh, but once you understand how it works, it's actually not that hard. So you need to understand the basics like nail anatomy, how nails grow. It's very important because this is how you will understand how not to damage nails. We recently discussed this topic on my Instagram uh, that I think the true mastery of the nail technician is not just um, how pretty the nails are and how long they last, but also if clients' nails are healthy, after you are done, uh, after you've done your work, or are they damaged, right? Then you need to understand products and tools, how they work, how they impact the nail plate, 
and of course learn the technique, like how to use each tool and product properly. I'm so glad I found you, Anastasia. Thank you, Raisha, so much. The most talented nail tech ever had, had was mostly self-taught before taking normal formal classes and getting her license, Patricia's sharing. Yes, I agree. I mean, back then I wasn't actually self-taught. I went to the beauty school first and then I started working. But now I understand it was almost the same. So they didn't give me much knowledge. I only had an idea of, okay, okay this is brush, this is acrylic, I should apply it on the nails. So they gave me a very, very basic understanding on what I should do and nothing else. So yes, I think technical, I still was self-taught. That's why it took me so long because I wanted to take an e-file class or infill class. When you do extensions and then your client returns, you need to do infill, right? So you don't do extensions every single time. That's procedure you need to do way more often than extensions, but I had no idea how to do it and I couldn't find any class. I didn't understand how the product should work, how should I choose them, and especially classes on dry manicure or Russian manicure. And that's why it took me so long. But today it's different. You can do it all within a few months, uh, not years. And this is actually one of the reasons that I decided to become an educator. I, I wanted to become an educator because this is my mission, to give you the right tools and knowledge and show you how to do it right from the beginning because I mean it can be done much faster and I mean we can talk about it for a long time but I think it's just easier if I show you a few uh, works of my students I'm super proud of them and I think this is what really prove uh, this result because they are doing amazing job during the class um, and uh, sometimes uh, I get questions regarding uh, work like um, Anastasia, tell me which drill bit should I use to trim the cuticles or which speed should I use to do this? And sometimes if this question is through Instagram or Facebook, I have an opportunity to go to their profile and take a look. So sometimes um, also I, I use you guys send me pictures and I see nails uh, like this. And I mean, I can absolutely respond to your questions like you need to take this bead you need to do this speed and you need to do this but when i see some works i understand that it's not about taking the right bead or using the right speed it's about understanding the basics okay so if i'll dry manicure or russian manicure it's all the same thing by the way just different names this technique will not magically do all the work for you Okay, it's not a magic pill. You still need to understand how nail anatomy works, how not to damage nails. And um, it's simply a technique that will help you uh, to clean the nails, but it's not everything. Okay, so it's just one technique. So if you don't have good basic education yet, don't worry. It's never too late to get it. And you know, it's not that hard. So what I'm saying, it's not like, getting a lawyer degree, right? When you need to learn for years and then practice or a doctor. It's really a matter of like a few months. So what is Russian manicure and is it dangerous? You, if you've ever heard this term Russian manicure, you definitely have seen some articles, maybe social media posts that, oh, it's dangerous. Um, and I understand where it comes from, but um, let's look at this way. Okay, Russian manicure is dry manicure where we use e-file. So the main difference between Russian manicure and any other like traditional manicure is that it's waterless. We do not use water. We use electric nail file and sometimes something else like implements like scissors or nippers. Um, and if you use electric nail file incorrectly, uh, then, of course, you, we can damage someone's nails and it becomes dangerous. But if we take a regular hand file and use it incorrectly, we can also damage someone's nails. So it's not about tools or products or technique, it's about execution. Trust me, I've seen so many damaged nails. If you're watching my YouTube channel, you know that you've seen them. 
um, and they were damaged due to improper product removal or using a coarse abrasive or nail prep or aggressive filing and shaping after product application. There are many different ways on how to damage the nails um, and improper use of any tool, whether it's a hand file, an e-file, or even a pusher, and even an orange wood stick. Even with orange wood stick, if you go too deep under the cuticle, we can also damage nails. So with every technique, not just Russian manicure, it's all about the execution. So it's like, is driving a car safe? Well, I mean, it, it is in some ways, right? Um, so if we follow the rules, like we drive on green, we use seat belts, well, we're not talking about extreme situations. Okay, they, of course, they happen too, but I mean, if we are being careful, if we're following all the rules, like driving responsibly, um, then that's what we do on a daily basis, right? And it's okay. But if we decide not to follow the rules, like drive on red or, you know, just cutting everyone's way on a highway, well, it might end up really badly. And it's the same thing with Russian manicure. So as long as you're careful, you're following the rules, um, it's a perfect technique. But once you don't, not just with Russian manicure, with any manicure and extensions and tools, then we might get into trouble. So yes, any tool can do harm when it's used improperly. So e-file and Russian manicure is simply a technique. Um, these are more questions that I get a lot, like tell me where to order this bead or where to order this e-file, or I need the exact same gloves that you have and gel. And I understand because like if I showed you some beautiful color or crystals and you want to order something like, like the same thing, of course. But many people see it as uh, an answer, like, oh, it's not working for me, probably because I don't have the right bead or right gel. And sometimes it can be the reason, but most times it's really about the technique. So um, imagine you come to the juggle artist, you know these juggle artists that juggle with the fire torches and ask them to give you the same torch that they use so you can repeat the same trick as they do. Okay guys, do you know what I mean? Uh, so it's tools are important, absolutely, and products and product knowledge is super important, but it's not everything. I would say it's like maybe 20%, something like that. And the other part is technique. So you need to know how to use it and how to work with them. Uh, Elinda, thank you so much for sending the links into the chat. So Nails of Norway, Elinda is sending you guys the right link. We had to change it. Sorry about that. A little technical difficulties. They're always there. So you just need to follow this link. And this is how you will be able to watch me through nailsproacademy.com. Uh, it's exactly the same stream as you see through YouTube, but over there you will be able to participate in the giveaway, which is at the end of this uh, webinar. And also you will be able to join my full program certification class because this button will be also shown only on the website. Okay, let's continue. So what are the best nail drill bits for Russian manicure? First, let's talk about the material. What kind of materials are there? So we have carbide, we have ceramic, diamond, stone, steel, sand bands, chamois, buffer, buffing and polishing. So we're going to talk about each one a little closer. Don't worry if you like, oh my God, that's too fast, Anastasia, I don't understand. So yes, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. So carbide beads are the ones that have flutes and they can have an absolutely different size, shape, and color, they may be golden, silver, and sometimes they're this like rainbow chameleon colors. They can have different color bands, which refer to their abrasive. And they also can have a different shape, like this one in the middle is a needle shaped, and then we have two others that are horn shaped. So carbide bits, uh, they are designed to work with product, okay, with artificial, nails with acrylic, with gel, with polygel, 
but not with natural nails. So they're perfect for product removal, for fills, for filing and shaping. Sometimes you can even use them for certain kinds of nail art. Then we have ceramic drill bits, and they have a very similar look. They also have flutes, and also can have a different size and shape and abrasive, but they are made of a different material, ceramic, which makes them a bit more durable. If you guys ever tried ceramic knives that you may might be know the difference. And they do the exact same thing as carbide bits. So they're perfect for product removal. They're perfect for infills, uh, for filing and shaping nails, but only for product, okay? They're too harsh for natural nails. If you will use them on top of natural nail, like 100% you're going to overfile them. Sharon is asking, are the bands universal? Okay, well, blue band is always more harsh than a red one. So if you have a red and blue, you know that red is softer, blue is more harsh. <coughs> but if you take one brand of drill bit with a blue band and another drill bit with a blue band too, it's not 100% that they're going to be exactly the same. Okay, so you know what I mean? So yes, bands are universal, so yellow is always soft, red, red is always fine. Then we have blue, then green and black. But between different manufacturers, they might have slight difference. But I mean, yellow is never more harsh than blue. Okay, so yes, they're kind of universal. Then we have diamond beads. So diamond is this little diamond sand that is on top of the beads. And these are the most common and popular drill bits for Russian manicure or electric file manicure. Uh, there are also different sizes and shapes, and they also have different color bands. Um, and if we use red one, which is fine, um, but there are also blue and green ones that are more harsh. So the abrasive mark depends on the client, on the skin that they have on their nails. So we decided individually. There's no universal one drill bit that you can use for everyone. They are much softer, so they're not really good for product. I've seen some nail technicians using diamond beads for product removal or shaping, and technically you can do that, but they're just too soft for it. Also, they're going to get dull very fast if you use them with acrylic or gel. So diamond beads are mostly for manicure, for nail prep. So they work mostly on skin and a little bit on the natural nail plate. Tracy is asking, but what about the ceramic cuticle bead? I see it used on natural nails. Um, yes, I think you were talking about the sphere-shaped one. Yeah, that's true. They might be one exception, but I personally do not use it, maybe. I did once uh, on man manicure because the skin was more thick. I tried it and yes, it works, but I think it's only suitable for a very certain kinds of skin and I do not include it in my classes because I think you should feel and understand all the drill beads and Russian manicure technique like at super advanced level to use this bead because it's still pretty harsh and it's kind of hard to use it. But yeah, that might be an exception. Then we have a stone bead which also works for great for skin care. We can work on some calluses, we can work on rough skin areas, we can work in, around the nail with it. I can say that I use them a lot, sometimes, and certain stone beads sometimes I also use for sticky and spreading kinds of cuticle, so they're fine for manicure too. Then we have buffing bead, which is for buffing the surface, and uh, you, mostly it's used for natural nails. It's called buffing, so most people think that, oh, it's probably for buffing the product. And you can do that, but it's, it's super soft usually. So it's mostly designed for buffing natural nails. If you want to buff the product, actually I've seen uh, there are these new drill beads 
that have the same material as buffers. So usually those are used for that purpose. And then we have a rubber or silicone bead, or also sometimes I call it polishing bead because you can polish the nails to a high shine. So we use these two beads, rubber and the previous one for natural nails, if the person does not have any intention to do extensions or overlays, if they just want natural nails uh, without any overlay or extensions, they just want pretty um, naked nails with this beautiful shine. Can buffing beads uh, be disinfected? Yes, they can. Uh, the, the exactly the same way as you disinfect um, any other product. Actually, their material is kind of similar to the stone bead, but it's not as porous. And it's um, also a little bit more like the buff, the buffers that we use. So yes, you can use uh, the d disinfectant with them. And also you can use autoclave or a dry heat sterilizer. And then we have a sand bands. Um, I personally do not like them much and don't use them much, uh, but I know that they're widely used for nail prep. In my opinion, that it's a bad idea because even if you use a very low speed, you're still going to remove many layers of the natural nail and the surface is still going to be kind of smooth, which is not enough for a good um, adhesion with the product. So I don't use them a lot sometimes, you know, for designs or if you want to, there was this trend with the color chalks that you can create acrylic powder with them. They always come in the kit with the e-file and they also come in different abrasives. Well, sand bands are single use. You cannot sterilize them. You need to throw it away. So they exist, but I personally do not recommend to use them a lot. Then there is another bead that I decided to uh, take separately. Sometimes uh, it's re referred as a carbide bead. So it's called steel or a safety bead. And you can see that it looks kind of like a carbide, but it doesn't have any flutes on it. And it's, it was originally designed for uh, people with diabetes um, because we're not suppose we're not allowed to do any cuts or like hurt their skin at all. But then I started to use it on any clients who have very thin and sensitive skin or for people who already have some cuts or wounds on their skin and cuticles. And it works really well because it, uh, it's almost impossible to hurt someone with it, but it can work as the kind of as a pusher. <coughs> Then we have a chamois buffer, which is mostly used for natural nails. If we want to do like uh, what, what is called wax manicure, you need to use a special paste or cream, or you can also use a regular cuticle oil. So it's mostly like a massage into our natural nails. It's polishing them a little bit, but it also designed only for clients who do not wish to have any overlays or extensions. How do you determine quality beads, especially as a DIYer, since we don't have access to professional products? Patricia is asking. Well, that's a good question. All I can do is just recommend you a certain manufacturers. So uh, if someone from our team could, could drop the links, uh, we have, uh, there are some drill bits at Nails Pro Academy store. I also recommend you drill bits from Erica's ATA, um, Stalex. They have pretty good um, beads. What else? Uh, most beads from Melody Susie I really like, especially the carbide ones. So it's really hard to, to tell, even if you're physically looking at them, sometimes it's hard to tell if it's actually go going to be good and durable. So yeah, that's a tough one. Okay, so for Russian manicure, we can use diamond beads, we can use stone beads, we absolutely can use steel or safety bead, we can use sand bands, even though I don't really like them, we can use chamois buffer, we can use buffing and polishing beads. So among all the materials we just talked, that means that we can use all of them except carbide and ceramic, right? Because these two are for product only. Okay, and all the rest is fine. 
the most common, I would say 90% of Russian manicure and dry manicure that I do, I use diamond beads. And all the rest, um, like last three are only for natural, like for naked natural nails. And stone and steel beads are only for certain kinds of clients and cuticles and skin. So 90% of the time, those are diamond beads. Panna beads are my favorite. Oh, thank you, Cleopatra. Cleopatra, that's such a beautiful name. Uh, yes, I like that brand too. I ordered some of them from Amazon and I also like the carbide beads. So thank you, yeah, for reminding. I use Kmi's drill beads. Trevor, wow, I didn't even mention this brand because I thought that it's not possible to order it because Kmi's is like a Russian manufacturer and yeah, I use it a lot. So I approve all this, uh, well, this brand that you guys just mentioned in the chat. Thank you. Okay, so nail drill bits have standard size and shapes, but clients' nails are unique. Okay, so there is not, it's not possible to use one bit, one technique, or the same scheme for everyone. Okay, it's always going to be different. Okay, you guys ready for a demo with scissors? Okay, we're going to do two demos today and one is going to be just regular dry um, manicure. So there are two different types of Russian or dry manicure. Uh, one is when we use electric nail file and then we use some kind of cutting tool. Uh, usually it's snippers. I personally prefer scissors. And there is another one which is kind of something in between, uh, it's called tweezers. And then there's the second type where we use electric nail file only. And today we're going to look through both of them. Lots of places in Europe sell it. I ordered online from Kinetics and Balti Beauty in Latvia. Thank you guys so much. And yes, feel free to exchange some names and brands if you feel like it. We have an open community here. We are like Nail Spa Academy, we're not, um, tied to any certain brands. That's why we always openly recommend you all the brands that we like as well as the ones we don't like. And I think it's totally fine to do that. All right, okay, give me a moment to set up the equipment so I can show you the video. Okay, here's the video and okay, I will be here in the little corner. So we start by pushing back the cuticle with orange wood stick and I do it all the time even if I know that I'm going to use an electric nail file and then I'm using a diamond flame shaped bit and clean one side of the nail. So technically it's very similar to what I just did with orange wood stick. I'm also pushing it back but since the drill bit is spinning, I'm also cleaning the cuticle that is on the nail plate, as well as um, I'm touching the skin further, so cleaning it too. By now, I just cleaned the dust, and you can see this line where the nail is matte, right? It's not shiny anymore, and this is the area where I touched the nail. So once we're done with one side, where I use a forward mode, then I switch to reverse mode and work on the opposite side. So sometimes when you're watching the video, I notice that sometimes people say, oh, that must be so painful or you're destroying the nails. But the truth is I'm barely touching the nail plate. All of my pressure goes into the skin, into pushing it back. And yes, we lightly touch the nail plate because we're supposed to clean the cuticle from this area as well. So then I clean it and I do not switch the rotation. It's still reverse mode and I'm working on the opposite side. And the goal is to clean all the spreading part of the cuticle from the nail plate. Usually the corners uh, is a very tricky moment when you need to clean them but not to cut the client. And then I push the cuticle up. Um, and once it's up, uh, basically we done the prep of the natural nail plate. Now I'm taking off the surface shine with a buffer. You can use the hand file for it or a buffer. And I usually do this before trimming the cuticle because um, if you do it before that, you can push 
them up even better and prep them better. So then I always check if everything is clean, if you see any white particles, if you see that the cuticle is still glued back to the nail plate, then whenever you will try to apply the color or the product, you may have this flooding of the cuticle. And then I'm trimming the cuticle with the scissors. Now imagine I didn't do all this prep. I would just take scissors and start trimming uh, the cuticles right away. Well, some parts would be trimmed, but it won't be possible to do it that clean. And I know that this, um, this is the part of Russian manicure that caused so many debates and different opinions, like it's dangerous and it's bad and you guys are ruining people's nails. Um, but the truth is we are trimming only the dead and dry skin. So you see now nails, they do not look damaged. Well, I mean the skin, right? It doesn't look irritated. Uh, we only get rid of the dead of the dry tissue. However, if you have a client uh, who is for some reason like super against this uh, trimming part um, and who's, oh, there's two, two me. Okay, and who's like, no, please do not touch my cuticles. Well, that's fine. Then you simply skip this very last part of your um, service. So you clean everything that's under the cuticle, you push it up and then you simply don't trim it. But I think it will make sense because this little um, part of the dry skin, it will not really allow us to do a proper product application, right? So uh, that was um, the tutorial. What great for the buffer? Kirsten's asking. So this buffer that I have, there's 180 and another side, I don't remember what's another side, honestly, but I use the 180 grit side. I always use 180 grit buffer to prep the nails if they're normal, healthy nails. But if we have super thin nails, nails that were damaged or super sensitive, I recommend you to take a softer abrasive, such as 200. This stops cutting the cuticle with regular nail file too. E-file manicure is safer, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. This is all of my clients' favorite part. What is the speed for this process? Okay, so for this exact process that I just showed you on this client, the speed was about 18,000 rotations per minute. And thank you, yes, yeah, so Linda's mentioning an, an approximate speed, which can be lower, like 13 to 16. It really depends on the client and on the beat. Uh, like this client has like standard um, skin to work on and it wasn't super sensitive. So I used, I went a little higher. I can use my nippers, but I'm so hesitant to try my cuticle scissors. Well, there, you can use nippers or scissors. There's no such thing as, oh, this one's better. So it works very well for you with nippers. That's totally fine. Uh, when I learned at school, I used both, but then for some reason, just scissors work better for me. Hi, Anastasia, dropping to say hi. I learned all my manicure techniques from watching your videos. Hugs, a huge fan. Thank you so, so much. Okay, so dry manicure is what we do at the beginning before color application or extensions, but it's technically part of the nail prep, right? Um, because sometimes I hear this, oh, can we just not do manicure? Okay, I came here just for the color for extensions. Can you just do my extensions and that's it? Um, well, the Russian manicure is part of the nail prep. Can we do extensions without nail prep? Yes, but is it going to last? Not really. Okay, so uh, like I said, trimming the cuticle part is optional. So if for some reason some person just they do not want to do it, that's fine. But everything that was before that, cleaning the cuticle from the nail plate, pushing it back, pushing it up, that's necessary. Otherwise, the nail plate will not be clean and we will not have a good adhesion. So now imagine, okay, I don't have it here, but so you need to use your imagination. Imagine we have a piece of scotch tape, okay? And it's clean and it's sticky. 
um, and you want uh, to take a piece, like a piece of paper and I don't know, let's say glue it to the wall with a clean scotch tape. Okay, that's pretty easy to do that. But now imagine you have the same piece of scotch tape and you dropped it on the floor and you didn't clean it for, for a couple of days already in the kitchen somewhere. So you drop it on the floor and there's the carpet, there's I know, cat hair, you know, everything. And you take this scotch tape and it's not clean anymore. Okay, it's still a little sticky, but not too sticky. And then if you try to do the same thing, like to glue this piece of paper to the wall with a, like, with a scotch tape that's not clean anymore, it's not probably going to hold that well, right? And eventually it's going to fall off. And that's exactly what happens if we don't do the nail prep. So nail prep is super important. Okay, have you guys seen this podcast? If you didn't, that I'm going to drop the link on my Instagram. Uh, later, uh, there was this, um, it's called Mean Girl Podcast. And one of the hosts, she went uh, in some salon, I believe it's in New York, to do Russian manicure. And she was like so excited about it and loved it and sharing her experience. And she said, my nails lasted one month. That's probably because they used some special cuticle oil and my cuticle stopped growing. And it was, I mean, it was so cute, honestly, for me uh, listening to this because she was obviously talking from the position of client, uh, like just do, like, oh, that was probably some, you know, magical product. But the truth is her nails lasted for one month simply because they did a good job because they did a good manicure, good nail prep, good product application, and her cuticle didn't stop growing. Unfortunately, for now, well, maybe, I don't know if they're a laser correction of cuticles, but uh, to this day, I don't know any tool that can actually stop your cuticles from growing. Um, but if you do a really clean manicure, it's going to look clean for quite a while, for a few weeks. So that was uh, the point of what what they did to this host. But I don't know, I just liked listening to this because, uh, you know, for me, this is something um, natural, you know, something regular that I do every day. But uh, for clients, for people who tried it for the first time, probably before that, she had different experience with nail salons and now she like mentioning these differences. That was very cute. Okay, guys, we have another important topic to discuss. Now, uh, common problems and mistakes. Let me quickly check if we have any other questions. Raisha is asking, so buffing the nails alone will make the enhancement adhere without an issue. Um, okay, if you just buff the nails and then apply the product, um, technically that is enough. Uh, but you cannot apply it super close to the cuticle. Like, well, I'm going to show you another demo a little later and I will show you a super close color application to the cuticle. So you will not be able to do it this way. If you don't do any prep, any Russian manicure, if you just buff the nails then you're supposed to apply the color or the product with a margin, like it's slightly overgrown already. So if you do that, then yes. It, it can work. But the reason we do this prep because we want to apply it close to the cuticle, right? Like the manicure is super new and fresh. Veronica's sharing, to be honest, I don't know why Express Gel Manicure was added to the list because people want to pay less always in the end. Professional nail technicians will do a full manicure. Oh, so Express Gel Manicure, what is it? it I s assume it's something where we just apply gel and, and nothing else? Yes, well, I guess it's probably for that reason, but I, as a nail technician, never offered such service and I'm never going to offer it, trust me. It's like, I don't know if we, I cannot even imagine like going to a surgery without further prep of your body for it, this surgery, that's a little, to me, it's a very weird thing to do, right? Um, I mean, everyone wants pretty nails that are going to last long, right? So if it's something they want to do, they need to have this full manicure. Express Gel Manicure 
it's something is when we just take a nail polish or gel polish at home and just apply it on our nails without any prep okay okay most common mistakes well the first picture is obviously a little extreme but it happens too so those are over filed nails but the, i would say one of the most common mistakes look like this uh, in the cuticle area if we use uh, some drill bits uh, to prep the nails improperly we may overfile the nail plate and the worst part is that sometimes it's not obvious you cannot tell from the beginning that you did something wrong it feels like oh it's it's fine like it's all clean it's all good and then after two to three weeks once they grow longer you are like oh no what is what is this thing why is there a ridge over there so this little ridge means that at some point you pressed into the nail plate too much with a drill bit that's why learning and understanding nail anatomy products is so important you know what i mean guys because um sometimes i get this question oh anastasia you are showing so much and you're sharing so much for free aren't you afraid that people are just gonna you know watch it and steal your ideas and techniques well actually that's the point why i'm doing this and no i mean what do you mean i'm afraid i'm showing it so you can learn but another problem that i realized i'm doing a youtube for like seven years and i have so many tutorials in there you can watch all of them where i show the nail prep this russian manicure but the truth is if you just look if you just watch it um usually it's not enough to repeat it i mean you can have an understanding of, of how it's done right but you still need to learn to understand what's the the exact bead that you choose what's the angle should you press on the nail or not and how much so that's why i add all this knowledge to my classes and not just knowledge practice because you can understand how it works but to be able to do the same thing you need to practice it by yourself so only when you will take the drill bit take the e-file and do this by yourself many times you will be able to recreate it okay another mistake is um, a little bit more extreme version of overfiled cuticle area and it happens for the same reason if we take the nail drill bit and we press too much but not just into the nail plate into the nail plate at an angle and what happened the tip of this drill bit which was a little sharp it sliced the nail plate and this is what happened by the way i've seen this a few times like on real people and also it happens uh, for the reason that when you're learning you might not be able to feel the drill bits right away right so it looks like you're doing exactly the same thing but it's not 100 percent the same that's why i personally think that you should not take e-file and practice on someone or on yourself right away that's why in our classes we have so many different levels of practical exercises that you always do first on the tips on a plastic fingers and then we practice with the different other objects like um, in the e-file 101 uh, we have eggs that we cover with a gel polish and practice on them so you will have this feeling and understanding of how to press on it so then you can do the same on the real people another version of the overfiled nail plate but from the side i'm not sure if this picture is clear enough but there is an overfiled sidewall area and this one seems well not a big deal i mean we can cover it up with the color right we can but when you damage any area of the nail let's say cuticle area or sidewall eventually it's going to grow right because our nails they grow from cuticle area towards the free edge so once it moves to the stress area and stress area is located right here where the free edge is that means the nail plate is going to be like a few times weaker than it was supposed to right because we all filed it and this is where all the problems begin broken nails cracks on the sides of the nails so the nails are not as strong as they're supposed to because we 
overfile them and while this area is near the cuticle it's not that big of a problem once it grows this is when it starts to turn into problem and oh my god you guys this one is so common and i see it so often let me know uh, if you can tell which big mistake was done here besides this ring of fire near the cuticle um, i noticed that during last two or three years i see this so often so uh, our nails they all have different uh, shapes i mean natural nails right some of us have parallel sidewalls and some of us have a like sometimes they're like this sometimes they're like a little fan um, but we should never destroy the sidewalls of our natural nail in the area where the nail uh, bed is going onto the free edge you know what i mean let me show you another picture with a line on it so this is the part of the natural nail that is missing and this is very common and not just with russian manicure sometimes uh, nail technicians do it when they try to shape the nails and make them more narrow and i get it we have wide nails we want to make them more narrow but destroying natural nail sidewalls is not the answer we should do it differently with the product by choosing the right shape by pinching them by choosing the colors that will look good but once you do it this nail is going to be weak uh, and it's going to take quite a while for it to restore. By the way, if you are doing this consistently, like overfiling the sidewall, um, let's say during a couple years, then it's going to turn to onycholysis, which is the separation of the nail plate from the nail bed. And it's going to take a, a long time to recover. So please do not do this. We're not supposed to destroy sidewalls. This is another extreme example of what it may look like besides overfiled nail on the top do you see what's going on with this poor sidewall of this nail so on another side well we cannot really see it but another side is kind of fine but this one you see this um, shape of the free edge it was definitely extremely overfiled all the way to the top like this nail plate is supposed to be longer along the sidewall but it's not because it's damaged and on top of that this overfiled cuticle area that has grown is also weak so it may continue to separate like this onycholysis may go up and up and up so please guys be careful sidewalls they are basically part of the structure of the natural nail okay and if we break it if we remove any part of well the only part of natural nail is the free edge which is fine to remove right it grows we trim it we cut it it's fine but all the rest everything that's on the nail bed that's attached to the nail bed area we're not supposed to remove any of that once we do we already broke this structure of the nail and we may experience different problems so the problem with weak and damaged nails is that yes we can cover them up with a product and it kind of nobody can tell anymore uh, but if it's too weak uh, we will always experience product lifting even if you do everything right when the nails are damaged they are not they cannot hold the product properly if we have constant cracks on the sides on the natural nails these cracks will appear in the product too but you're doing everything right you're doing product application like everything is okay like the apex all good but we still experience these problems why sometimes it's because of damaging the natural nail so keeping them healthy is important not just in general because like we are not supposed to damage people's nails right we do the opposite our mission is to make them better but also with damaged nails we will constantly have problems with having nail extensions oh no can this also happen if a client rips their extension stephanie yes absolutely it doesn't matter how it was done yes and actually i also had a client she had such a pretty nails and nail beds like long narrow so pretty i call them you know competition nails like you can take her 
to be a competition model, but she always used to bite them in this exact area along the sidewall. So her natural smile line was like extremely high, almost all the way up to the cuticle. So she did the same, but to herself. So yes, this can, or is a nail biter. Absolutely, that was, I was just talking about. Nail biters, unfortunately, do this to themselves by biting them. So yes, well, they usually only bite the sidewalls. Well, I mean, they don't bite them from the top, right? So overfiled nails usually come from any kind of damage that was on the top, like overfiling or harsh removal. But yes, that's possible too. And also having less layers makes it more likely to develop allergies. Yes, thank you so much, Nazareth. Absolutely, less layers. We're closer to the nail bed and the product can easier penetrate through this. So absolutely. So damaging nails is bad in so many ways. <coughs> Dark streaks looks like a bruise also. Jean, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, this poor nail was damaged in so many ways. Yes, and these nails are from my models. I mean, I don't, well, sometimes I take them from internet, but in 90% of the cases I don't need to because I see plenty of them very often. So I just take pictures. Product lifting. This is not so obvious problem. Uh, you're probably, wait a minute, Anastasia, our webinar is about Russian manicure and pro what does product lifting have to do with it, right? It's all about extensions or gel overlay. Well, improper dry manicure can lead and will lead to product lifting because we need to clean uh, the cuticle from the nail plate and if we don't do it very well and it's still there, the same thing is going to happen as I just described to you with a dirty scotch tape and a piece of paper. It's not going to adhere very well because cuticle is absorbing moisture. Okay, If we have some cuticle leftovers on the nail plate, the product is not going to adhere properly. So even though it, it may seem that product lifting has to do something with product application right, or curing, Yes, it does. There are other reasons for product lifting, but 80% of the problems with product lifting are related to nail prep or dry manicure, which, as we just talked about, is almost the same thing. Well, dry manicure is part of the prep. Do nails ever grow thicker or heal over filing or just longer? Um, Kirsten, yes. Well, um, okay. Thicker. If a uh, client's nails were originally thin, like from the day they were born, um, no. So the thickness of the nail plate is determined by size of the matrix, which is the root of the nail, and usually it does not really change much uh, during our life unless we have some uh, hormonal imbalance or other things going on. Um, but if the client's nails were originally thick and healthy and then they were damaged by overfiling them, yes. If the matrix, the root of the nail was not damaged, absolutely, they will recover eventually. But it depends on the damage. If it was just once, just some harsh, let's say, 80 grit file, harsh removal from the top, then it usually takes three to four months until the nail plate renews and gets back to normal. But if it was harsh over filing across the sidewalls, like I just showed you in this previous slide, well, this recovery may take a very, very long time uh, because you see this area where the nail plate is supposed to be there. Now it's covered with a regular skin. So recoveries like this may take a long time. So it depends on how much the damage was. If the person was biting their nails for quite a while, well, also it's going to take years recover. So let's just do a little summary. So most common problems with Russian manicure are overfiled nails, rings of fire, which is the same as overfiled nails, it's just uh, this ridge that we usually have near the cuticle, destroyed sidewalls, overheating, and what's overheating? Overheating is when we feel heat spikes from anything, whether it's an electric nail file when doing manicure, 
from hand file when finally shaping it or from the product when you're curing it. And some, sometimes nails are naturally thin and sensitive and we may feel it because of that. But if they're damaged, we're more like, most likely to feel it. So yeah, I noticed that someone in the chat mentioned it too, that uh, with these problems, people are more likely to experience heat spikes, exactly. Lifting, product lifting near the cuticle or along the sidewalls are another reasons, um, another problems that may occur if we do something wrong uh, with the dry manicure. Uh, Bonjeka, I'm sorry if I'm reading some of your names incorrectly. Is it true that cutting cuticles makes them grow back thicker and harder? That's a great question. And I can uh, speak from experience. And so uh, if you take a look at the cuticle, well, the, uh, the appendicum, you will see that there is the part that is super dry, um, which is the dead tissue. And then there goes another part, which is softer. So it depends on the skin and on the person because sometimes we can cut cuticles very deep and it will still be okay. I mean, they're not going to bleed or feel any pain. It really depends on the skin. While sometimes we can remove only a little bit. So if you remove only the dead tissue all the time, so it's going to stay the same. But if you remove it deeper, then yes. Uh, if you remove it deeper, it is going to work like scar tissue. So what happens when we have a cut on our skin? We have a scar tissue that is thicker and a little bit, there's a little bump on our skin, right? It's like on a different level. Um, and eventually it goes better depending on the skin, on our age, on many other factors, um, but it's still going to stay there as, as the scar. So if we do extreme trimming of the cuticles, if we cut them too deep, then that's what can happen. And I said, I'm speaking from experience because I did it to myself. I had almost non-existent cuticles, but when I was practicing, as you guys already know, I didn't have a very good education at the beginning. I didn't know 100% how to do it right. So I didn't do it right from the beginning. And obviously I did some super harsh and deep cuticle removal on myself for, for quite a while. I don't do it anymore, but I, I used to. And yes, my cuticles, I definitely had more dry skin over time. And the same thing with the surrounding skin. Like if you clean it too much, if you clean it all the way too deep, then it, it will grow more. So that's why the goal is not to, you know, go crazy just only remove the part that's actually not letting us to apply the product and that's it. So I think it should be like that, okay? We should never go too extreme with these things. The nail techs at Nail Salon always file my nails. Excuse me, let me, okay, let me charge. Um, my nails do thin and feel the burn, very painful, Celeste. Well, as I always say, that's not right. Manicure service, nail extensions, is supposed to be a relaxing service. It's not supposed to be painful. Well, maybe in certain points it might feel a little uncomfortable because I know some people are not uncomfortable with the sounds of filing or buffing or e-file, but it, no, you're not supposed to feel, feel pain or heat. So be careful. Whenever you feel that, almost every time something is wrong. Carmen saying, I feel Russian manicure lasts longer than Brazilian manicure as far as cuticle growth. Do you agree? Um, well, Brazilian manicure in that one, we do not remove cuticles as much. So I would say it depends on the, uh, on the nails because with some nails, it will be exactly the same. But if we're dealing with a person with uh, super dry skin, who have many hang nails and these problems, then yes, absolutely. With Russian manicure, it's going to have a longer lasting look because because we simply cleaned it all and if we don't clean the hangnails well obviously they're not going to look clean for a while okay guys so i'm not uh, by the way trying to say that this is the best technique that we're all supposed to use only the truth is there are actually many different techniques within the russian manicure and i uh, show different kinds of them in my classes too 
uh, like I said, to me it's not like a certain technique um, and it's just a way, a very convenient, fast and safe way, safe when you know how to do it right, to prep the nails, okay? That's what it is. Okay, so now this question, should we trim the cuticles or is there a way to avoid it? So you need to clean the cuticle from the nail plate, otherwise you will not be able to apply the product. Um, but trimming this part with the scissors or nippers, well, if there's nothing, and so with some clients, you will see that you prepped it and then there's nothing really to trim, then absolutely, yes, you can skip this part. However, uh, sometimes I have clients who have so, so many dry skin, so many dead tissue, if I just leave it there, it's going to look weird and I will not be even able to do the design near the cuticle that I planned to, right? So sometimes I think it should be just uh, common sense. Overheating, is that caused by speed, pressure, or both? Uh, both, absolutely. Speed, pressure, um, simply yes, incorrect use of electric nail file. So if you do it right, the Russian manicure can increase durability of nail extensions and overlays. Like I said, not because it's a magical technique or peel or we use some magical cuticle oil, simply because we clean everything so well under the cuticle along the sidewalls, in the corners, then you can easily take the product, whether it's gel or acrylic, anyone, by the way, even if you use regular nail polish with Russian manicure, it's also going to last longer. And then you apply it on the clean nail plate. This is how it's going to last longer. I'm a nail tech in the US, how do you recommend I go about practicing Russian manicures. It's illegal to cut the eponychium and any skin here. We said that's a very good question. Um, from what I heard, uh, that using electric nail file is not illegal, right? You can use it, uh, which means you can uh, trim cuticles using e-file. So to me, it's a little weird because actually it's much easier. Well, in certain cases, it's easier to remove it with scissors or nippers, uh, but uh, compared to the e-file. But if you trim it with e-file, then in this case, it's not considered illegal, right? So I would just recommend use e-file only technique then. So Russian dry manicure is an advanced technique. I always say that because I see that sometimes nail enthusiasts, nail technicians think that, oh, it's so easy. I just need an e-file, a drill bit, let me try it. But I would like to compare it to something else. Like imagine juggling fire torches and juggling five at once, right? That's, that doesn't seem easy, well, at least to me. So we can't do it right away. First, we need to learn how to juggle with two balls, right? Then three balls. And then we do the torches, but without fire, right? Because we don't want to set our hair or like some, somebody else on fire. First, we need to practice it and feel confident, right? Uh, so first, it's not going to work. You need to learn and practice again. And only when you're like 100% confident that, okay, five torches, this is how I easily juggle them. Okay, set them on fire, right? Only at this point, when you're confident about this part, we can do the slightly dangerous part. And then you combine it with certain dance moves. I mean, have you guys seen these beautiful fire shows when they do all this? Um, so they don't do it all at once. They learn step by step. And to me, Russian manicure is about the same. So it's like um, juggling with five fire torches. So first you need to learn how to do regular manicure, how to work with electric nail file, how to do product removal without damaging nails, how to do infills, and only after that the Russian manicure. Because you see when you use e-file on the product, if you do something wrong accidentally, if you file off too much on the product, it's not that big of a deal, right? It's, it's product and there's a way to fix it. But if you do the same on natural nail, or on the skin, well, it's not that easy to fix it anymore. And we can cause problems we just talked about earlier. 
So the most common mistake, I would say the most common mistake in Russian manicure is sometimes people try to juggle with the fire right away, just off by watching the video on YouTube. And I hope, yeah, that I explained it well. I'm not talking about you guys who have uh, experience already if you took classes, if you're already doing this, then absolutely it's different. But if you're just learning, I strongly recommend you to first learn the basics, like how to work with products, how to use an e-file, and Russian manicure should be the next step. I know that it's like beginning of the service, so it seems something that we should learn from the start, but it's really advanced technique, and if you want to learn it, how to do it right, with so you will not damage people's nails, then we need to follow this ladder. Okay, so this is how I would picture it. So first, like first step is basics. That's why uh, we have um, many different online classes in our academy, and today I will be presenting the program which includes um, many of these classes. So I would say level one is basics, manicure 101 or pedicure and pedicure basics. What does it mean? It's regular manicure that we do and use cuticle remover. We use orange wood stick, we use pusher, we use hand file uh, when we need to file and shape the nails, but we don't use any cutting implements yet and we do not use e-file. Step number two is gel manicure. This is when we take gel, we build the structure of the nail, we fix broken corners, if there are any, we fix broken sidewalls, if they are broken, we build the structure with the gel and do overlay. Next level is soft gel tips extensions. This is where we learn how to do soft gel tips extensions, which is also uh, not too hard compared to nail ex like sculptured nails. But at this point, you also need to understand how to do the prep. Then we have e-file 101, uh, which is, um, well, this is the class, but in the new program that I will present today, it will be only one module. This is where we'll learn how to use electric nail file, how to set up the speed, how to work with different drill bits, and most importantly, learn how to feel it. because. Like I said, it's important to know everything, but also you need to do it with your own hand. So this is where we're going to practice a lot, to do product removal, to do shaping, so you will feel confident about using e-file. And only after that, the fifth step of the ladder, which is on top, is Russian manicure or dry manicure. Only when you're confident about doing these previous things, at this point, you it will not be as hard to understand and feel Russian manicure. Well, that's not everything, of course. After that, uh, there goes nail sculpting for beginners, which is nail extensions, then dual forms, then advanced nail sculpting, extreme shapes, and nail art. Well, nail art, I'm not sure if it should be included in this ladder because it can, it's like slightly separate thing. I mean, you can learn nail art just all the way from the beginning. But when it comes to all these other steps, I think it's better if you will learn it in this sequence. So in the new course, we are going to cover all the steps of the ladder. So every step of the way from beginner to top rated nail technician. So manicure 101, gel manicure, we also included pedicure class in that e-file manicure. Uh, Russian manicure and nail sculpting for beginners. So basically everything from the beginning to the end. And sculpting with dual forms, because they are so popular today in, in my second demo, I'm going to show you uh, a little tutorial with them too. Uh, intermediate uh, nail sculpting and advanced nail sculpting, those are level two and three, which include French nails stilettos, edge nails, uh, square oval nails, what else, I think um, Russian elements, so different um, advanced and extreme nail shapes, um, inlay design, so something you need to learn when you already know how to do one color nails or basic nail extensions and how to fit the form, right? It makes sense that you need to learn the basics first and then this one. And some nail art classes, so this is everything is going to be included in this class. And there's a new thing that we decided to include, which is marketing module. 
how to track clients, how to turn every client into regular, and some social media secrets for nail technicians. Because I understand that it's important to learn the techniques and know how to do it right. But if you're struggling with clients, right, that's still very overwhelming. So that's why I decided that this part is actually important too. And we included this in the full certification program. Okay, let me show you a few students' works. Um, this is the work from, Im from Manicure 101, I think. Yes, you guys can tell that I'm, I'm really proud of our students because, um, I mean, every time they graduate from the course or send their graduation pictures, I can, you know, just reassure myself that, yes, this is working. The classes have enough information and practice so they can do it. This is another one from Nail Sculpting for Beginners. And this one, yeah, this is Nail Sculpting for Beginners too. So this is kind of works uh, that students do after they complete the class. Oh, look, it looks like it's time for another demo. Okay, so let's do another demo. And seems like we're doing perfectly on time because also in today's program, we have new program presentation, which we will do after the demo and online class giveaway. Nail art looks best on nice nails though. Elinda, 100% agree. Yeah, that's all what I always say too. I think it's better if you do one color nail that are just blue or white, but they have perfect shape. They have perfect structure. And then imagine you have nails with not so good shape, but with very pretty birds on them. I think most clients will always prefer the first one. I do Russian manicure since a few years. I'm nail tech since 10 years. All what you say so far I knew and can implement is this training will be suitable for me or you would recommend something else. Okay, so the class that I will present today, it's not only about Russian manicure, it, in, it also includes all these modules that I mentioned, so nail sculpting, nail sculpting level two, level three, uh, dual form. So if you would like to learn all that too, then absolutely. And I'm sure even if you're doing Russian manicure already and you're confident and familiar with this technique, you would still benefit from taking this course too, because I will be showing you how to do it with different clients, with different skin types. So I know that uh, according to your uh, experience that you guys mentioned, many of you already know some of the things that are included in this course, but even with nail sculpting, there's always something new to learn. So um, I will still encourage you to take this uh, class too. If you have doubts, guys, if you really have doubts and you're like, well, I'm not sure if it's for me, you can send me the pictures of your works um, on my DMs on Instagram or through nailsforacademy.com and I can look at your works and give you a better advice. All right, let's do the second demo. And I will disappear for a couple moments. All right. So first we push back the cuticles. The first part never changes, it's all the same. And then I do quite the same thing on myself, but this time we're not going to use scissors, we're going to use electric nail file only. And I intentionally recording it from a different angle, I'm doing it on myself, by the way, so you guys can see what's actually going on. So the um, drill bit is going flat, to the surface of the nail plate. And I'm barely touching the nail plate. I'm mostly pressing into the skin. You can use the same bead not only for the prep, but also to clean the dry skin in these areas, in the corners, around the nail. And then I'm pushing up the cuticle. So with some clients, you need to do it for quite a while. It depends on how much dry skin they have. But with some, it's pretty quick, like on myself. And then I take this sphere bead with red abrasive mark. If you guys are curious about the speed, it's about 18 to 20,000 RPMs for my skin, which is regular skin, uh, not too much cuticles. 
and then on a reverse mode I simply trim it oh I'm sorry a forward mode this should be forward mode because I move in the opposite direction and that's it and yes I I mean it's not sped up it was the real uh, real time removal I showed you I just realized yeah that's how quick um, and how fast it is um, and now you can see that my cuticles they look pretty clean so first we clean we use um, uh, we use flame shape bits from the beginning and then we um, use this sphere bead to remove the cuticle from the top okay so now let's do extensions because I also wanted to show you some cool things about extensions and color application so I apply dehydrator non-acid primer and base coat I cure the base coat and then I'm going to use a clear poly gel in the dual form um, so whenever you have um, a nail with a good nail prep you do not need to worry about product lifting near the cuticle you can use any product and I just wanted to show you one of the ways to do extensions uh, in this certification program uh, we cover all kinds of nail extensions including sculptured nails which in my opinion is the most important ones but I included dual forms too because sometimes you can do pretty cool things with them so we apply them on the nail then I press and at this point we need to freeze cure it with the lamp okay we already did then I fully cured it and take it off I'm sorry it looks like there is a little part of it that's missing uh, but with dual forms you technically apply the product into the dual form put it on the nail and that's it and now we have this is a clear poly gel uh, by the way in what I'm doing now I'm taking off this sticky layer underneath and from the top because there's always sticky layer underneath because it was curing and from the top a little bit because a tiny amount of product squeezed out through it uh, then I'm going to file this area we could do it manually with a hand file but with e-file it would be much faster right I'm using the carbide bead and remember guys why did I tell you about carbide beads we're not supposed to use it on natural nails so right now at this moment I'm touching the product only um, and so do you understand how important it is to learn e-file basics first which I included in the e-file 101 module and then to learn Russian manicure because if at this point if we accidentally will file the natural nail instead of product we will have this ring of fire that I showed you in this mistakes slides okay so after we did that I'm going to use a hand file to slightly shape the nail we don't need to do much shaping because it was I mean dual form kind of did it for us and I buffed it from the top too and this is the clean nail now the most fun part color application but I decided that it's going to be a little boring if we just apply the color right so let's do some nail art and I'm sure that you guys can all recreate this nail art if you want to do this feel free and do not forget to tag me later it's nail co my, uh, you know my account on Instagram because I would love to see it so I'm not going to apply the color all the way first you see I have this little margin near the cuticle so if we want to do one color application you need to apply it close to the cuticle from the beginning but if you plan some other nail art it's better not to rush it okay so I always leave this margin I'm going to do some art now I'm going to do an ombre and before curing it in the lamp I'm going to get closer to the cuticle okay because I, if I do it now the product may flood my cuticles and obviously we don't want that so what I'm doing now you can use any clear gel I'm using base coat I applied base coat and without curing it I did not cure the color yet I'm doing an ombre I just want to have this beautiful fade so this is a jelly blue color it looks kind of green in the camera right and only after I did this ombre I did not cure it yet I'm pushing back my cuticle and with a detailer brush I'm getting closer into closer to the cuticle and doing closer color application so this was remember I mentioned this um, podcast 
earlier. So this lady said, oh, my nails, they stopped growing. So the reason she saw that they stopped growing is because they applied the color like this, like super close to the cuticle. I cured it already. Now look how pretty it looks. So that's what I meant. If you did a good job on Russian manicure or nail prep, this is how you will be able to apply the color. So then we apply the second color with the second one. You do not need to do this again. You just do it with a regular brush. And using detailer brush is optional too. You don't need to do that all the time. Sometimes I do it depending on the design. Um, and with the second coat, I just wanted to add a little bit more color on the free edge because I don't want to have a blue nail, uh, nail bed area and a transparent free edge. I want to have this fade. And then I add some glitter in between because my nail is slightly see-through. I just want to cover that. And wow, it's, it's so transparent. It looks pretty already, right? But that's not everything. Hold on. Now we are going to seal it with a glossy top coat, of course, because we have beautiful transparent nail. And now we're going to use something that you all have in your house. I'm, I'm sure of that. And it is something that you guys have in your kitchen. And um, you, I mean, we usually consume it, but today we're going to use it on the outside. And this is sugar. Um, so, I'm sorry, yes, it looks a little wasteful, but I promise I didn't throw away this part after the video. So we're going to apply sugar on top of uncured top coat underneath and cure it in the lamp, okay? So I applied top coat, did not cure it, sugar, and then cure it in the lamp. But how do we get rid of this sugar? No, I'm not going to let it stay there. Who wants sugary nails? Um, I'm just going to use water to put my nail in the water and the sugar is going to be fully uh, absorbed uh, in the water and now there's no sugar anymore but we have this beautiful texture underneath and we don't need to do anything because it was a um, no cleansed top coat so it's not sticky anymore and we have this texture that slightly reminds me of um, you know these frozen windows uh, during the winter and I think it, it looks kind of fun. And this is the cuticle area, by the way. Let me show you. So it's super thin. And the color looks like it's actually under the cuticle, although it's not exactly. It's just super close. And this is what the design looks like. So uh, let me know what you're seeing, guys. Um, I intentionally decided to show you the design that does not require any special tools. So you can recreate it with soft gel tips. I mean, if you do not know how to do a dual point or nail sculpting yet, that's fine. Um, and if you do, do not have any products at all and you do not know how to do all that, well, you will definitely learn how to do it in our classes. Um, if you take care of your bits, they last a very long time. And using a sharpening brush or a wire brush will help maintain their quality as well. Uh, yes, Tanya, thank you so much. Absolutely. Same as with the brushes. If you take care of them, if you clean them, uh, sanitize them and sterilize after each use, they're absolutely going to last longer. And also do not use them improperly. Let's say if you have diamond beads, do not use them on product because this is how they will get dull pretty fast. Love the idea. Fantastic idea. Looks beautiful. Very smart way to create texture. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I'm super excited that you liked it. And I'm also super, I'm super excited and look forward to seeing your screenshots from the webinar. Or if you are going to recreate this nail, I would also love to see that. Do not forget to tag me, Nail Co. or Nail Spro Academy. Because like I always say, I, uh, you guys can see me through this video and I cannot see you, but I would love to. <laughs> so. Please share some pictures of how you're watching the webinar, how your space looks like. That, that's always fun. And after the webinar, I always look through them in, um, you know, in my notifications on Instagram. And I just loved it. Oh my God, I never thought of using that or doing that. It's so interesting and neat. Of course, yeah, it's pretty easy, right? And like I said, you guys definitely all have sugar. So today, instead of 
consuming it inside, we're going to use them slightly different. Love the raw sugar. Yeah, well, I just happen to have only brown sugar in my house, but obviously you can use the white one, it doesn't matter. All right, let's proceed. We have program presentation and a giveaway and Q&A session at the end. So um, let me switch to the rest of my presentation. Okay, I'm back. Okay, full certification program for nail technicians. So um, if you guys never uh, attended my online classes, let me quickly explain how they work. So it's not like live webinar that, that we have now. All our classes, they're pre-recorded, which means lessons are available anytime that you decide to watch them. And you can watch from any device, you can create your own schedule, which means, let's say, you can only study on weekends or in the evenings or Mondays and Thursdays. So it's up to you. You can build your own schedule and you will get a live feedback, I'm, I'm sorry, a feedback from live teacher. Uh, Elinda today is here with us in both chats um, and she is a very experienced uh, educator. She's with us for a few years, first as um, a student and now as educator. Uh, and I'm also reviewing your final graduation works um, before we accept them. So you will have quiz at the end of each module. And once you pass the quiz and pass the final assignment, you will receive a certificate. So for this full certification program, you will not get certificate of completion. Instead, you will get I think 15 certificates of completion for each module, which means once you finish Manager 101, you get certificate for that. Then you finish uh, Russian Manager, well, it's called Electric File Manager in our system, you will get certificate for that. Then you finish Pedicure, you will get certificate for Pedicure. And it's up to you. If there's a certain topic that you do not need or do not like, do not want to take, let's say you're allergic to acrylic, okay, and we do have acrylic included, acrylic extensions, then you can simply not take this module. You will do hard gel, you will do poly gel, you will do nail sculpting, like all that except for acrylic, and it's fine. And you will get your certificate for gel sculpting. You will be able to connect with students in international chat. We have a Telegram chat where once you become our student, you are there full life. We don't, um, I mean, you can stay there as long as you want. And we just communicate between each other. You can ask questions. Sometimes we talk about where to purchase certain products, you know, anything related uh, to nails and nail industry. And yes, this is Linda, um, our educator. She completed, I think, every online class that we had back then at Nails Pro Academy and successfully completed. And now she's educator and she's really great in it. We always receive such a nice feedback from our students regarding of how uh, helpful she was. And so she's going to evaluate your works. Uh, so this is not like YouTube. This is not watch and then you're on your own kind of class. This is watch do home assignment, take a picture, submit your work, educator is going to evaluate it, and then you proceed learning. So I, you, you guys know my story, right? I had so many bad classes that I took and so many good classes. And I know that by watching something, you will not really learn. Yes, you will get motivated and pumped and feeling excited. And maybe you even, you will learn some things, but to actually have the same skill at the same level, the only way to do this is through practice. And when you practice, inevitably you're going to do some mistakes. That's totally fine, that's normal, that's part of the process of the education. And I just want us educators, Elinda, me, to be there when you do these mistakes so we can quickly correct them 
and then once you graduate you will not do them anymore it's better to do your mistakes when you're learning on your tips on a plastic finger maybe sometimes on yourself but not on your clients okay i don't want you to repeat my story where i lost so many clients because i didn't know how to work with them properly so you will get 15 certificates for each module if like i said you decide to not take some modules like you don't want to do nail art or you don't want to do dual forms that's fine then you will only get certificate for each module when you complete it when you will send um, your assignments and they will be accepted so it's not like you automatically get them we never sell certificates or just give them away okay we always give them once you prove that you have this knowledge and skill to get them and uh, this is the students chat what it looks like and another question that I get a lot is, is it possible to learn online? Absolutely. We're learning online now. I personally learned so many things online, like English, now I'm learning Spanish, so many marketing and social media classes and nail classes too. So yes, it's absolutely possible. And I mean, our students works easily prove it. So now under the video, you have this button that says buy course. Uh, if you're watching through YouTube only, then you can um, follow the link and go to Nails Pro Academy because you will be able to see this button right there only. And this is how you can enroll in the course. And we have a special price only for 24 hours. So if you are thinking of joining, then the best price will be only during first day. So this is... Um, how I never expected to um, my career to go because when I started doing nails, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna, you know, working in a salon, maybe um, eventually working in a better salon. But I never thought that after like a few years, I will be living in different countries, traveling the world while doing what I love. I'm still I'm doing nails, I'm teaching nails. And I'm super grateful for this opportunity to do this online. Uh, okay, oops. So now it's giveaway time. Okay, we and yes, we have questions already. How I'm gonna win the course? Okay, now I want you to guys please listen closely. We will have a Q and A session afterwards, so you will know how to win. So step one. To win the course, you need to leave your comment at nailsproacademy.com. Okay, I will not go. I'm not going to count um, messages from YouTube because we need to have only one place. Okay, because it will not be fair and it will not be possible to determine which one was first. Thank you, Alinda Nails of Norway. You can see she just sent you the link where you can log in. So I will give you a couple minutes to do that. So only comments at nailsproacademy.com will be counted. So today's price is going to be eFile 101 class, which is one module of this new certification program. And this is class is suitable for beginners. You will learn how to use electric nail file from scratch. You will know how to do product removal. You will know how to fill eFile, how to choose drill bits. We're going to do so many different exercises so you can feel it. And this class is great to prep you for Russian manicure technique. Okay, so who's ready at Nails Pro Academy? I'm going to ask you a question and you need to reply it. So I, I'm expecting to see some replies at Nails Pro Academy. And once I will see your replies, I'm, I know I'm going to count probably, then I will take the picture and the person who's going to be third, like one, two, three, third from the top with the right answer is going to be the winner, okay? If the person from the top, the third person will give an incorrect answer, then we will count the next one who's correct, okay? So you need not just to answer the question, but to answer it correctly. Okay, last chance to join through Nails Pro Academy. I see that everyone's here. Victoria, Maria, Cleopatra, Lillian, Erica, Dennis, hello. I'm so glad to see you and this is the question in which part of the website send the answer naomi there's a link by nails of norway on top of your message please just click 
on this message and this is how you will log in. Okay, and the question is, which material of nail drill bits should not be used on natural nails? Okay. Oh wow, we have over 100 participants now at Nails Pro Academy, so it's, it's really great to understand that you guys all want to win this class. I just love giving opportunities you know, like this. I think it's fun. So once again, which material of nail drill bits should not be used on natural nails? If you guys are sending me replies on um, YouTube, I just want to let you know, I mean, it's, it's fine, you can if you want just to check yourself if it was correct or not, but it's not going to count towards giveaway, okay? All these comments are on nailsforacademy.com and oh my goodness, we have so many uh, correct answers. And, well, not many, but yeah, almost all of them are correct. So now it's going to be about how I choose um, the winner, not about, I mean, the right answer because they're all correct. All right, last chance to send your reply into the chat. Um, and once again, it needs to be a correct answer. Okay, well, now it's not hard to tell the correct one because everyone answering. Okay, uh, countdown. So I'm uh, with this phone, I'm just going to take a picture and from, from the top, we're going to count the third person. You guys ready? Last chance to send your replay, reply. I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm just ex super excited too. And let's do the countdown. It's five, four, three, two, one, and I'm taking the picture. All right, okay, so let me show you. Now you can see the names here, so everything is fair. And I'm just reading the names from the one, two, three. Yes, the third answer is correct. So the third uh, participant, oh my goodness, who gave the answer is Sela Nasurla. I'm sorry if I don't read it correctly, uh, I will uh, send it into the chat now. Sela, okay. And congratulations, you're getting eFile 101 class, which is one module of this class, but it's also like a separate big class on how to use uh, electric nail file. Okay, I just I just sent your num uh, name and let me save this screenshot too so we will not lose you. Congratulations and thank you guys all for participating. I'm truly impressed on how many correct answers I just seen. That means you guys were listening closely. Thank you so much for that. Uh, that's super exciting and I just want to remind you that now uh, this full certification program is available. The button is right under the video, which says buy course here at Nails Pro Academy. Um, you will have the special price within one day, within 24 hours, and they start now. Uh, there is an option to pay in few installments. If you want to do this, this class is going to start on May 17. Okay, it's not going to start today or tomorrow which means you will have plenty of time to get ready, to order some products if you need ones, you know, just to clear up your schedule. So it, that means it starts in one month and a half, right? May 17. Um, what else is important? Well, that's our first big course full certification program that includes everything like from the beginning to the top, all classes except for pedicure and nail art are recorded by me. Pedicure, there's another educator and a fox. And uh, for nail art, we also have different educators because they're much better than me in these topics. So um, I'm doing just manicure and nail extensions. And also they're going to be a new marketing module. All right, so now let's do a Q&A time as I promised and I'm willing to answer your questions. 
Uh, can you plan a scholarship program for people who can afford uh, the fees of the class? Well, we'll think about it. For now, we have an option of paying in few installments. So if you guys are sure, like, okay, I really want to take this program, but you're like, well, but maybe I'm thinking of like paying after two or three days. The only way to secure the best price today if, is if you place the order, if you click on this button and then you will have a few days because tomorrow, like after 24 hours, the price is going to change. It's going to be much higher because the truth is it includes basically most of our, all of our best classes or all, all of our long classes, nail sculpting, Russian manicure, pedicure, uh, nail art classes. And when we counted the total value, I'm not sure, maybe some, somebody will remind me now in, in the chat, but it was about, I think, almost $4,000, like if you buy each course separately. So uh, we're offering almost 65% discount for now. I mean, compared to if you buy all these classes separately and there is a big value. I mean, each module is technically a big class. So we're going to give you two years to pass on this program. Um, so you will have enough time, you know, to learn all that. And also, I forgot to mention, if we have, and we have, I can see that, some students that already passed some of the courses that are included in this program, such as nail sculpting, or maybe you did a file one-on-one in Russian manicure already. If you did that, then we also have a special offer for you. Uh, all you need to do is just contact us through the website and we will send the information to you. How many weeks is the class? Uh, Lillian, oh my goodness. Um, how many weeks are two years? 104, I believe something like that. So, okay, how uh, weeks is slightly different. We are going to give you access for two years. You can, I mean, if you are going to study three times a week, then you will finish it much faster. Uh, we're just giving it a very big um, period of time. So you will have some time Maybe you will need to order certain beats and deliveries, they take time, right? Maybe you, well, I mean, during such a long time, obviously we need time off, vacations and so on. Um, so I would say it's possible to finish it even in less than one year. It just all depends on your pace, on how often you're willing to learn. Uh, what if I done the basic course for gel and acrylic? Will that be considered? Deborah, absolutely. Yes, we do have special uh, conditions for our existing students. Please contact us through the website and yes, we'll give you a better deal. Do I need models? That's a problem to get models. I used myself last time. Uh, yes, okay, so if you completed basic gel and acrylic, that means you will also need to do e-file 101, Russian manicure, level two of nail sculpting level three and you will need models for them you can use yourself like Alinda when Alinda was a student she also did her extensions on herself uh, you can ask someone for volunt volunteer so yeah for certain classes you will need models you will not need models for nail art you can do this on tips uh, web class. Um, <laughs> let me go to the Niels Pro Academy to see the course price. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the link to this course, I mean, how you can join, it's under the video on nailsproacademy.com. If you're watching through YouTube, please follow the link of Nails of Norway. This is the only place where we offer this certification program. You cannot find it on the website. You cannot find it on my Instagram. It's exclusively only for webinar participants who are watching right now. Thank you for clarifying. Two years access is great, Lillian. Yes, of course. So we just thought, I mean, one year I, we thought is enough actually. But then I thought life happens, right? Sometimes we might, you know, just take a little time off and then we decide to do nail art later. So we decided to give you plenty of time to finish all that because honestly, there's a lot. Uh, but also I don't want to give you any pressure that you need to finish every single module. If you don't feel like doing dual forms or polygel or some other part, uh, absolutely, feel free to do that. Okay, 
Will you go over nails and health issues, skin issues, allergies, calluses, thin, soft, weak, peeling nails, or medical conditions like diabetes or treatise, people what have hand finger surgery? Okay, Marlena, so yes, we do have a module with um, diseases and certain conditions. We're not covering that much that you mentioned, like a treatise, people that have finger surgery, um, because like from my experience, usually if it's, um, I mean, if the surgery was a while ago, then you just need to, depending on how the finger, the hand or the nail is deformed, due to it, you need to do a certain um, product application. So in nail sculpting um, classes, we do have, um, I think a bonus lessons for the deformed nail in manicure, no, in, electric nail file manicure, we do have a module that covers um, certain diseases. We do not go too deep in medical conditions themselves, uh, like diabetes. Uh, however, we do cover how to work with, with these certain types. Like with diabetes, you need to work, um, like I mentioned, with this safety drill bit. You are not supposed to trim the cuticles because we're supposed to be super careful. What if I miss the webinar? Well, now you have an opportunity to quickly watch the replay. When I will finish, you can uh, watch it again. The replay will be here for a limited time. Uh, is there a way to buy the entire catalog of courses? What is the course called? Well, yes, that's what we're offering today. It's called Full Certification Program from Nail Beginner for to Top Rated Nail Technician. The button is right under the video at Nails Pro Academy. Can we sharpen bits, Carmen? Unfortunately, no. Well, we can sharpen scissors, we can sharpen nippers, we can do this with pusher, and there's and you please do not do it by yourself though. You need to go to a special service that does the sharpening of manicure tools. But with bits, no. Unfortunately, the only way is to replace them. But come on, I mean they are not that expensive. Uh, if you Whenever you buy beads, any other products, you need to understand it's not just you buy them. The price, like the self cost, should be included in the service. Okay, so for diamond drill beads, depending on how often you work, usually they are good for 20 to 30 services. With carbide beads, it's much longer, maybe like 40 to 50 services. So you just need to replace them to a certain time. FBSCO sharpening does great with cuticle nippers sharpening. Oh, thank you so much for that, Carmen. By the way, I'm still looking for proper sharpening services, especially in the US. So if you have any good contacts, yes, feel free to share. Okay, hello from Norway, hello. Okay, so I'm noticing that some people are joining just now and you can watch the replay of this webinar where we'll finish. I'm sure you like it. And please, um, the only thing that is going to be different uh, that uh, the special price for the course is available only for one day. I've seen people sharpening their nippers with foil. Is that true? Well, Alejandra, I, I mean, I, I know. I've seen people uh, disinfecting, no, sterilizing there are tools in the regular oven, you know, the same one they use to cook chicken. And I mean, well, we, I guess we can't do this, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, with nippers, with scissors, uh, this is what the blade looks like. And when it gets dull, it's just not as sharp anymore. So if you want to make it sharp again, you need to do it with a very certain angle. And this angle should be even from the start to the end, from the beginning to the end of the blade. So I have no idea how it's possible to do it by yourself. I mean, like with any job, like we're doing nails, I think it's better when professionals do it. But I'll tell you more. I had, like back in Russia, I used several sharpening services. And some of them did a very bad job, actually. After their sharpenings, my uh, scissors, they did not work properly and I was injuring people. 
So even with the professional services, sometimes they don't do a very good job. Honestly, I cannot imagine how to do it by yourself unless you really understand how it should be done. But no, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Can I go to the academy in person? Paula is asking. Unfortunately, for now, we do not have in-person classes, but I really hope that maybe next year we're going to do some tours in a certain locations. But now we only offer online classes because uh, as for me, like I've been changing countries during the last few years. And um, to me, this was like the only way to continue doing what I'm doing. And I know it's like that for some people too, you know. Uh, some of us are still in school, some of us are maybe working um, and when you're learning online you can really build your schedule on how you want uh, to do it. I know that uh, in-person classes are slightly different, there's slightly different energy, um, so maybe we are going to do them in the future, but for now there's just online classes. Uh, get it professionally sharpened, don't use aluminum foil, see the videos of IG See or sharpening, they're authorized by Stalex in the USA. Carmen, thank you so much. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. It's better if it's done by professionals. How can I safely remove gel polish or natural nail spray? I have a video about it on YouTube. Um, one way is to file off the top coat with a harsh abrasive file, such as 100 grit, but be careful. File off the top coat and then sock off the rest in the acetone. Or you can I personally use e-file for it, but you need to use this method only if you're very confident about using e-file. Only if you passed e-file 101 module, because this is mm, also an advanced technique, like you can damage your nails. So if you're not sure, use acetone sock off method. It's always going to work. I'm not here from the beginning. Can you tell us again the courses and the price? Ellie. So the course is full certification program that includes all you need to know about nails, starting from zero to top tail nail, to top tech, women, top rated nail technician, uh, from manicure, basic pedicure, soft gel extensions, basics of nail sculpting to advanced nail sculpting, sculptured nails, dual forms. You will learn how to do different shapes like almond, stiletto, edge nails. It also includes nail art, brush and manicure, and how to use e-file. And all that is available now in full certification program. The button is right under the video at Nails Pro Academy. If you're on YouTube, then the link is, you can find it in the chat from Nails of Norway. Which gel do I need to use to paste the extensions if I want to cool gel X nails, Naomi? Well, if you mean you, what kind of gel do you need to apply gel X extensions, I recommend special. They're called glue tip gel. There are many brands that offer it. Uh, they have it by a pre-model ones. Basically, any brands that offer tips, they have this special gel. I get bubbles in most of my gels. I don't manipulate them much. Why does it happen, Malice? Well. It happens depending on how you, you pick up the color, how you use the brush. Um, so just if it's a gel in a pot, do not close it too tight, do not close it completely, just slightly let it, well, not open, but just not um, put the cap, you know, too tight. If it's um, a bottle with a brush, when you pick it up, be careful. Do not do this too much because this is how you will mix them and get even more bubbles inside. Okay. Okay, a Russian certificate is not valid in the USA to be covered by insurance, state by state requirements. Okay, so these certificates, they are international, they are not really Russian, um, but this is not the replacement of, um, of the license. So if you're in the US, you still need to have your license, you still need to pass the state board exam and these classes cannot replace it because, well, it's a different story. Um, state board exam is technically an exam that you need to pass to prove that you have a certain knowledge and skill to work as a nail tech in the US 
and our classes, they are simply about teaching you the actual modern salon techniques. So you will really know how to do Russian manicure, how to do nail extensions, how to do pedicure, nail art. So these are about real actual skill that you will need in the salon. Put the gel bottle in hot water and the bubbles will go away. I have this problem too. Thank you, Cleopatra. Yes, heating up a little bit your gel is a way to do this. Hot water, or I also use, you know, this uh, heater that I use in the room. Sometimes I just put something on top of it so it's not going to be too hot. And this is how the bubbles will go up because of the heat. I think I'm having an allergic reaction to one side of my nail. Without taking off the product, how can I treat my finger? Okay, well, it really depends. It, it's really hard to not uh, take it off the product because I cannot tell for sure what is allergic reaction for. If it's for the dust, uh, it's one thing. If it's for the product, then it's another because there might be an issue with under cured product on your nail. And if you do not take the product off, I really don't know a way to treat it. So usually it's the only way to treat and understand allergy is to take the product off and then see what happens. If, it, if it's getting better, then we just check. Okay, was it allergic reaction to acrylic? Then we avoid using it. If the allergic reaction was to under cure gel, then next time you just don't use the same product and try to avoid under curing product in the future. I think the USA is the only country, but you will need to check with the EU. Um, well, US is the only country that require this kind of license, by the way. Yeah, I checked in, in other countries. Um, well, there are certain kinds of licenses, but they're not that kind that you need to pass it through state board exam. Mm -hmm. Okay, since I cut my cuticles, they grow out very fast and crusty. Any tips? I use professional scissors, of course. Um, well, if you have this as a natural growth, unfortunately, I, you cannot really stop them from growing. I only recommend you to use cuticle oil to moisturize your skin, to use hand creams. And well, with the cuticles, just make sure that you are trimming, that you're cutting only the dead tissue. So they will not grow even more. But if they've been always like that, unfortunately, for now, I, there are no real options on how we can stop that. I've seen they use some kind of rubber gel for the soft gel extensions, but I'm kind of lost of which gel I should use. Oh, Naomi. Okay. So there are different gels to apply soft gel extensions, to apply gel X tips. And I personally prefer, I know it actually depends. It really depends. So there are gels that come in a pot or in the bottle and they have medium to thick consistency. They're usually called soft glue tip gel, something like that. And then we have, they're usually called non-stick gels. So the gel that you can roll between your fingers, but please do not do this without your gloves on because this can cause allergic reactions. And you can use this non-stick gel uh, to apply them too. So it's up to you. If you're a beginner, uh, I recommend you to use a glue tip gel first because with this non-stick gel, you can, uh, accidentally apply too much. Uh, however, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. So in the class, we also are going to compare these two products. My nails are curved down. How can I do a cover up without cutting my natural nail? Um, oh, there are many ways to do that. You can do this with regular forms. You can do this with dual forms. So you need to add more product to the top. And uh, then you need to trim your nails as short as possible. And you simply can fix it by rebalancing it with nail sculpting. So that's why I think it's so important to know how every technique works, especially the sculptured nails. So you just build technically a new nail on the top, then you file off the rest underneath. And this is how they're going to look like they're growing straight. But if your nails are curved down, they're still going to be like that, but we can visually fix that. Okay.
we don't have good educators in India. That's why all hopes are on you. <laughs> Please help. Well, of course, that's our classes are available to anyone worldwide. We have most of our students are from the US, but we also have students from all over the world. We have uh, from Canada, we have from England, from all over Europe, uh, from Africa and from India too, by the way. Uh, will we get a student number as it's required to attend shows in the US? Must be professional or student. Deborah, that's a good question and read, let me write it down because isn't the, it's not the same as the license number. Uh, like I said, we cannot give licenses. You need to pass the state board exam to do this. Uh, so if it's that, then we cannot. But if it's something else, let, I need to um, do, do a little research to figure out about that. Raisha, can you tell us the difference between rubber base gel and base coat, please? Of course. Well, base coat is gel that you apply at the beginning that creates a really good adhesion between the nail and the product. Okay. Um, and rubber gel, rubber base gel is the same thing, but with a thicker consistency. So with rubber base gel, it's very common to use it to hide some imperfections. So let's say if you have a nail with a very, with a dip, or it's bumpy, or it has uneven areas and you want to cover them up, then rubber base coats are usually used for that. And regular base coat is usually thinner consistency and you just apply it. Also, what should we use for extremely thin damaged nails? It depends on how badly they're damaged, but since you're saying extreme, if they're like extremely thin, like kind of I cannot wash my hands in the hot water thin, then the only way we can do is just to wait until they renew. Unfortunately, we cannot really do anything. But if they're like slightly, this person at least can touch them without feeling pain, then I simply recommend you to use any soft gel to do an overlay, no extensions, nothing extreme, just a thin coat and let them grow. Okay, okay guys, so we are all two hours and 13 minutes. So it's time about finish. I'm going to take a couple last questions. Um, extensions, okay. Can you give us tips and tricks on how to use minimum products and powders for different colors and effects? Like if I only have one chrome color, powder or not. Okay, I'm all about having less products actually. So, um, of course, there are many tricks. As for the colors, you basically only need to have uh, about 18 colors and all the rest of them you can mix together. By the way, color theory is included in our nail art classes in this full certification program. So you will have an idea of how to create more and more colors. Uh, if you mean color uh, chrome powders, then it's easy. You just have two colors of chrome powder and then you can use jelly gel color on top. So let's say you have silver chrome, you apply it and then you apply jelly yellow color. You will have a yellow chrome. Then you apply red jelly color and you will have another color. So having transparent jelly colors is cool because you can create more colors by adding glitter or any other background to them. Debra is correct. You basically just need to prove that you're registered for school. Most schools give you a registration number. This is what you provide the trade shows when you go to register. Debra and Lillian, thank you so much for mentioning it. I will definitely do a research on that um, number for a school. I think we can do that, but for now I'm not going to say anything because I need to be 100% sure first. So I can give you this information. I will, yes, I wrote it down so we will let you know um, and thank you. Thanks for generosity, sharing your knowledge, much success to you ahead. So thank you so much guys and thank you so much for joining and also I am super excited that seeing that we still have plenty of people even though it's been two hours and 15 minutes. Thank you for deciding spending this Sunday, this Easter time with me. I hope that you enjoyed the webinar. I look forward to your um, the stories for your tagging me if you're tried this nail. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my classes 
and I'm just wishing you a great time, a great day, and I will see you in my classes or on my next webinar. Thank you and have a great day. Goodbye.